Good afternoon, respected colleagues, and thank you for this opportunity to present this uh, topic, the role of hemodynamic support in STEMI, when and how. Not every STEMI patient comes to us with, uh, who require hemodynamic support. So the indication for hemodynamic monitoring in STEMI, these are the indications like management of complicated acute MI, where to differentiate between hypovolemia versus cardiogenic shock, ventricular septal rupture versus acute MR, severe LV failure, RV failure, refractory ventricular tachycardia, difficulty in differentiating severe pulmonary disease from the ventricular failure with available non-invasive data, assessment of cardiac tamponade, and assessment of therapy also. So uh, as per the previous talk, cardiogenic shock in STEMI is a different ballgame. Now, the recommendations for management of cardiogenic shock in STEMI are like that. The class one recommendations are immediate PCI uh, in cardiogenic shock if coronary anatomy is feasible. And if not suitable, then it is CABG. Invasive blood pressure monitoring with an arterial line is recommended. Immediate Doppler echo to, uh, for, to assess ventricular and valvular function, loading condition, and to detect mechanical complications. And it is indicated that mechanical complications are treated as early as possible after discussion by the heart team. Oxygen mechanical respiratory support is indicated according to the blood gas. And fibrinolysis, uh, whenever possible, whenever primary PCI is not uh, available. Complete revascularization, again, already told, complete revascularization during the index procedure should be considered. The two-way indication, again, IABP, it should be considered in patient with hemodynamic instability, cardiogenic shock due to mechanical complication. Hemodynamic assessment with pulmonary artery catheter may be considered for confirming diagnosis for guiding therapy. Ultrafiltration may be considered in refractory congestion. Inotropes, vessel pressures are needed for hemodynamic stabilization. Short-term mechanical support may be considered in patient with refractory shock. And routine use of IABP is not indicated, class three. So this, this slide summarizes this talk, no shock, primary reperfusion. Impending shock, primary reperfusion, along with hemodynamic monitoring. Shock, LV unloading, then primary reperfusion. So the philosophy, there is a time to rethink. We are very keen about dot to balloon time less than 90 minutes. But dot to balloon time nine, less than 90 minutes is not associated with improved in-hospital mortality, especially in anterior wall MI and cardiogenic shock. Despite timely perfusion, 10% mortality in index hospitalization and 76% of those who survive progress to congestive heart failure in next five years. Myocardial reperfusion actually is a double-edged sword, according to the Dr. Bronwald also, ischemic reperfu ischemia reperfusion injury can lead to cardiomyocyte death. In crisp AMI trial, there is within one week of successful reperfusion, 40% LV injured quantified by CMR. So the myocardial perfusion is driven by several factors like coronary perfusion pressure versus ventricular filling pressure, myocardial oxygen supply versus demand. Reduction of myocardial injury is our utmost need. Only reperfusion could not meet the goal. Hence, the concept came dot to unloading, but the trial occurred, that was a failed trial. But since that, the important things are circulatory support to increase mean arterial pressure so that we have increased urine output, decreased serum lactate, ventricular support to reduce LV pressure and volume so that we have reduced pulmonary capillary wage pressure, coronary perfusion to increase the transmyocardial perfu uh, perfusion to resolute STD changes or CKMB level. Now, that may be an approach for this situation. First, assess the patient and classify the shock. Stable blood pressure and perfusion status, stable respiratory status, go for revascularization of culprit lesion. If not, moribund patient, limited goals of care, palliative care. Then stabilize the patient. If low blood pressure, malperfusion, then consider vasopressure or inotrop. If hypoxemia, acidosis, mechanical ventilation. Diagnose the cause of shock and define hemodynamics by left heart catheter, right heart catheter, echo, if mechanical complications, surgery. Consider early mechanical circulatory support, the factors favoring persistent hemodynamic electric or respiratory instability despite uh, initial measures, high risk coronary anatomy, severe ventricular dysfunction, and caution against early MCS, low level of operator experience, vascular anatomy prohibitive, delayed to primary reperfusion therapy. 
then revascularize uh, culprit lesion and stabi uh, stabilize the patient in ICU. Now, regarding pharmacological management, prompt management of hypotension and hypoperfusions are needed. A volume status should be replenished. RVMI is actually a different ball game where left uh, right heart catheterization is important. Uh, regarding inotrop, noradrenaline is preferred over dopamine in different uh, studies. Dobutamine can be given in low cardiac index, high PCWP, borderline, low BP without severe hypotension. And in case of non-hypotensive patients, dobutamine plus base of dilator are the choice. Now, regarding the other mechanical circulatory devices, we have continuous flow pumps or pulsatile pump. Pulsatile pump is our IABP. Axial flow, continuous flow pumps are impella CP and uh, percutaneous heart pump. Intracorporeal uh, things are these. And tandem heart VA ECMO are centrifugal flow extracorporeal system. Regarding IABP, the regulatory mechanism depends on scale of diastolic pressure augmentation, scale of reduction in systolic pressure, degree of blood volume displacement, timing of balloon inflation and deflation. The advantages are ease of insertion, relative low cost, global familiarity. And in STEMI, routine uses are not recommended, but uses are in hemodynamically unstable circulatory support required to perform CAG and PTCA. Cardiogenic shock, unresponsive to medical treatment. Refractory ischemia, unresponsive to treatment or waiting for definitive revascularization. And benefit may exist in mechanical complications. In TAMI trial, there is less reocclusion, more mortality but there may be a selection bias. In PAMI 2 trial, no difference in death reinfarction, IRA reocclusion re stroke, new heart failure, ventricular arrhythmia. In IABP shock 2 trial also, no all-cause mortality benefit was there or long-term mortality benefit even after six-year follow-up of that cohort. But IABP shock 2 uh, trial gave us a very good risk stratification score comprising of six variables like age, blood glucose, serum creatinine, in lactate, Timi blood flow after stenting history of stroke. Now regarding impella in STEMI, it is a catheter mounted axial flow device deployed into LV across uh, uh, aortic valve transfers kinetic energy from a circulating impeller to the blood in LV resulting continuous flow across AV. ISAR shock failed to show difference in mortality, bleeding or distal limb ischemia was there. Euroshock registry, 30-day uh, mortality was high, but it likely reflects last resort character of impeller 2.5 in poor hemodynamics and greater imminent risk of death. An impressed trial, no outcome differences are there or mortality difference are there in 50% in both arms when compared with IABP. But there is excess major bleeding events. In tandem heart situation, extra this is a system where extracorporeal centrifugal flow pump that bypasses oxygenated blood from LA to descending out of higher 20 French transeptal cannula, 21 French transeptal cannula in LA and arterial outflow cannula into femoral artery. And it has been seen that in ascending aorta, increase after load restricts LV unloading, but in descending aorta, increase after load is alleviated by retrograde perfusion of mesenteric and renal arteries, as well as dead vessels of aortic arch, which decreases LV stroke work, but no mortality benefit was seen in different small trials. In VA ECMO, in STEMI, it removes deoxygenated venous blood, circulates it through oxygenator and extracorporeal centrifugal flow pump, and returns oxygenated blood to arterial circulation. Inflow cannula is RA or across SVC, IVC, or outflow cannula is in femoral artery or subclavian artery. It can reduce RV and LV volume, increases MAP, may be associated with increased LV pressure. And there may be concomitant use of vent may be required, like inotrops, concomitant IABP or LV impella or LA cannula. Now, the limitation of VA ECMO in STEMI is like possibility of LV distension, potential high risk for bleeding, and risk of vascular injury. But Euroshock trial, there is non significant reduction in 30 day mortality and even one year mortality with standard therapy plus ECMO than standard therapy only. The trial was underpowered actually, but there is definite improvement. And the, to compare the different types of MCS nowadays available, IABP has minimal ability to affect ventricular performances, and it depends on intrinsic ventricular performances to provide maximum benefit. ECMO, tremendous total body circulatory support, but does not affect ventricular performance drastically. Impella, good blood pressure support, directly unload LV. So Impella may be an answer in future. But a, recently, a meta-analysis reported the result of four ICTs, including only 148 patients, comparing percutaneous MCS versus IABP. MCS use did not show any difference in 30-day mortality. Now came PROTECT-2 trial. It has clearly shown benefit over IABP. Impella has 
uh, clear benefit in 30 day major adverse event reduction, 90 day major, major adverse event redu reduction when compared to IABP. After that, Uspela or Aspela registry comprising of 154 patients, they actually uh, told about early initiation of hemodynamic support prior to PCI with Impeller 2.5 is associated with more complete revascularization, whatever what uh, we are discussing in previous talk, that more complete revascularization can be done with this and improved survival in the setting of refractory cardiogenic shock complicated in MI. This is the outcome and this is the different uh, 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 the co comparison between the different MCSS. Now the last part of this discussion is RVMI, complicating with uh, cardiogenic shock. Pulmonary artery pulsatility index is the indicator, hemodynamic indicator of choice for RV failure in uh, inferior wall MI as well as post LVAD. Shock trial showed RV dominant cardiogenic shock had similar mortality as LV dominant shock. Significant higher in hospital mortality when RV is involved. The options of this RVMI situations are like surgical RVAD, ECMO, atrial septostomy, impella RP, tandem heart protect duo cannula, and recover right trial showed impella RP was safe, easy to deploy, and reliably resulted immediate hemodynamic benefit in life threatening RV failure. So these are the situations where RV failure and LV failure are, uh, this is a spectrum, the MCSU spectrum. The take home messages are like that. Early decision making regarding need of MCS is important. Not to hesitate in putting pulmonary artery catheter when required. Good care of access site is required. Individualize during selection of MCS according to experience of use, follow up knowledge, hemodynamic data, revascularization plan, and cost effectiveness. Proper weaning of MCS, the timing and techniques are very important. Thank you for your patient hearing.